Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe, and one of my favourite baits is dough. I speak about it quite a bit in my, my blogs on my website, and also um, I use it quite a bit when I'm fishing. The reason I'll, I'll use different types of dough baits is that uh, depending on the conditions that I'm fishing, I may not have all the baits that I need at the time. So you can actually manufacture a bait made out of various ingredients that is, is perfect for the conditions you're going to fish. It'll never replace well, to my knowledge anyway, it'll never replace a live bait. But what it can do though, is get very, very close to some of the, uh, the food signatures that the fish in the area are looking for. The other great thing is that it's a great standby. Uh, if you don't have that much bait and you, you find yourself fishing, you can keep dough baits in the fridge, pull them out, use them when you haven't had a chance to actually go and buy some, some other baits. So while I'll always have you know, the various baits that you can have in your, your home, like I have a worm farm, so I always have uh, for worms, and I, um, I, I can usually get hold of, um, I've, I've got a frozen collection of things like pippies and uh, mussel and squid uh, and various types of fish baits. Um, having this as well really sort of adds to that collection. And sometimes on the day, sometimes, dough baits will outfish other baits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the ingredients I use and how I make up a dough bait with a couple of extra ingredients that not everybody uses. And getting a dough bait right can make the difference between catching fish and not catching fish. So it's well worth a try. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to colour the bait that I'm using. And I like to do that because it can make a difference between getting the fish or not, depending on the water conditions. So most people will make dough baits out of, uh, out of flour. So obviously it's going to be white. Uh, you can add a little bit of cheese to that, so sometimes it goes a little bit yellow. What I'm going to use today is red. Just the food color, you can get that from the supermarket, but it is bright red. Uh, and what I like about that is that that color is so much closer to things like um, some fish baits, crab, or worms. And so the different colors can make a difference. What I will do though, is usually I'll only make half the, half the dough colored and half white, because then you've got two baits, which can give you two different colors, and sometimes it might be the color that is the difference between catching or not. The other thing is, if you're going to be using color baits, um, I recommend that you use rubber gloves, which I will today. Uh, they keep the mess from getting all over your hands, and sometimes that can take a while to get off. Also, make sure that you're on a, on a surface that uh, is easily clean. So, guys, don't do it on your mum's tablecloth. And fellas, your partner's gonna, not gonna like it if you splash red or color everywhere. So, be warned. Okay, so I've got my gloves on. I'll just show you some of the ingredients that I normally use depending on the type of fish that I'm going for, but there are some fairly universal applications that can be used for fresh water and salt water. Um, these ones I'm going to use in a salt water application, so I'll show you a little bit about what I do there. The first thing, the basic ingredient for the dough, obviously, is going to be um, is white flour. Fine white flour. Use that every time because it is, it's got such a fine grain that it uh, easily mixes into some, a very, very soft, malleable, uh, putty-like dough. If you use the, the wholemeal stuff, it tends to be a bit coarser and it doesn't mold quite as well. So first off, use that. The next thing you'll need is just breadcrumbs. Uh, the best thing to do is make sure that they are stale. And then what happens is with the application of a little bit of water, they become very, very soft and silky. That combination then, that has a little bit more of a food quality in it that is more attractive to the fish. So you use a portion of that um, in the, the dough itself. Then of course salt, just plain non-iodized non salt is added to that. That always, always spices up and is more effective on a saltwater bait. I also use garlic, so just from the, the herbs and spices part of the supermarket you can always get garlic powder or garlic salt. Um, I use the, the garlic salt in particular because it adds both the salt and the garlic. Very, very strong flavour, but also um, universally effective for drawing in fish. Then I've got a group of other scents. So 
you can get vanilla, you can get aniseed, you can get chocolate, you can get strawberry, and these work very, very well on different types of fish. In particular, I like the strawberry when I'm freshwater fishing because that is very, very good for uh, trout, catches carp, and believe it or not, I've caught Australian natives with that as well, but usually with a little bit of addition of salt and some other spices. Uh, the last thing, I'll, or the second last thing I've got is, uh, as far as oils are concerned, just a bit of tuna oil. Also, fish sauce. Don't look past fish sauce. It is quite amazing that the spiciness of fish sauce plus the application of a little bit of uh, the fish scent in there really makes a difference. And then finally, um, if you're not using, say, the liquid aniseed, which is getting very, very hard to find in supermarkets, I find at least, um, then you can use a standard anise. And that's ground anise, so it's, it's aniseed, it's got that really strong smell, but you can use it as a powder. Very, very cheap, you find it in the spice section of the supermarket, and it does the same thing as well. And then also you'll be using a little bit of water to mix the whole thing together. So. I don't use all of those together. They are various types of ingredients for different types of doughs. What I'm going to use now, or what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to show you one that I would normally use in a saltwater application. So this is the type of thing that will catch mullet, brim, I've caught trevally on it, uh, and I, at, at times I've had bites from larger fish, I'm not really sure what they are, I haven't caught them, but I know that it does actually attract a lot more fish than that. But it's very, very effective, and at times, as I say, it can outfish other things. The next thing you'll do is just, normally you put this in a container, I'm putting it flat like this, which uh, could work against me as I do it. So you put a little bit of uh, flour down, then what you want to do is you want to take a little bit less breadcrumb and just add that in it too. The bread, as I say, is going to make uh, have a bit more of a, a food flavour to it. So you're adding that on top. Okay. What you do is you want to part that a little bit. Okay. The next thing we do is we put a little bit of salt in. And because I'm only making a very small amount, the amount of salt that I'm using for this is, only, is about that much in there. That would be about half a, uh, a teaspoonful. Put that in. Okay. I won't put any of the oils in yet. What I'll do is, what I want to do is, I want to colour this first off, and then I'll put the uh, the other oils into it once I've actually mixed it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that food colouring, and I'm going to add it to the water, to this water that I've got here. Uh, mix that through, and then put it into there and make up the uh, the dough itself. So I'll do that and uh, you'll rapidly see it change colour. But it won't be a dark red, it'll be sort of a, a slightly lighter pink. Okay, so all we're doing with that is I have got in here, uh, well I've got too much water in here, I don't need that much, but just say, if I was going to use about, um, say, a quarter of a cup of water to a large piece of, uh, of dough, then I'd be putting in about a teaspoon of um, this colouring. As you can see, it goes nice and red very quickly. So, looks like raspberry cordial, fantastic. Anyway, the next thing I'll be doing is just starting to mix that in very, very lightly. So I'll just put it into the center, just like you know, you're mixing uh, cement. Although hopefully it won't go that hard. So we just push that in there and do that. And so the first thing to do is you mix this stuff, you mix it slowly so that you can Gradually increase the amount of water so that you don't over, if you oversaturate it, you won't get the right consistency. You want this to be stiff enough so that it's going to stay on that hook uh, for quite a while. Okay, so all I'm doing, I can feel through there now as that, uh, that gets damp, as you can see what it's doing. So all I want to do is I want to make sure enough moisture has actually got through that, all of that flour. So at the moment, it's not through there yet, so I just make a bit more room. I'll just put a bit more in before I start sort of moulding it. And that will do. So all you do then is you just start to make sure that everything gets moist. Okay, and that's why it's, I'm using a sort of a glassy um, 
cutting board here, which makes it really, really easy to well clean afterwards, but uh, nothing sticks to it. It's an even surface, very slippery. And as you can see, that was deep red when we started, but with the addition of that and the mixing of that liquid there, the red liquid, this goes, rather than being deep red, it goes pink. Obviously, it's being, gets the white in there from the flower translates that into a sort of a, a pinker colour. But as you can see, so what I'll do, I'll add a bit more to this dry stuff here, but it's always good to have some dry dough, or dry, dry ingredients at least, because you can dry this out. You don't want this to be too moist. You want it so that it becomes stiff enough so that it will easily mould and stay on a hook, just like the commercial doughs that you buy. Only this one here, of course, is made up of these ingredients. We know exactly what's gone into it. Uh, it doesn't cost near as much. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to put a bit more into what is left here. So part of that is already left. Okay. And now I'm just going to mix that around. Now this one, I probably put a little bit too much into that. So what I would normally do then is add a bit more flour. And you can see this stuff goes, that colour goes everywhere. So, okay. So this is a bit moist. So what I would normally do now is to put a bit more flour, salt and bread in it. So what I'll do is I'll put a bit more salt on it first off. Okay, a bit more bread. The bread will quickly dry it. Okay, now that is that is quite a, a that is like almost like burly, and with the moisture with the bread in there, will make that with a, quite a bit of kneading with quite a bit of uh, massaging will actually make that really really smooth. Okay, so I put some more flour in, but I won't for the time being because this one is actually quite stiff. Actually, that is about perfect. And what I want to do now to it, if I've picked up a bit more, is to add a little bit of oil to it. So this is now, this has got the flavours in it, but it hasn't, doesn't have the scents to it. So with this, what I might do is I might keep two of these separate and just keep kneading them. And what you'll find is you can see the grainy bread in this one, but with enough molding, the bread will break down and become very, very silky. Okay, so I've got two there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put different scents in each of them. So one I'm going to put, I might just put a little bit of garlic. Quite a bit of garlic. Strong smell because it's only going to be a small bait in a large volume of water and what I want to do is I want to use that as its own attractant so even if I was using if I just say I didn't use burley this in itself sends off such a smell the same as some of the other commercial dough baits do that it will attract fish from a wide area okay Likewise, this side. Now, this one is about right, and this one here, this this one here, I'd probably add a few more ingredients to, mainly a bit more flour to actually dry it out. This one is really quite stiff already. It's almost like plasticine, and that's about perfect. That's exactly how you want that. But I haven't added anything to it. So what I would do with this one, okay, is probably, I'm going to, just for something completely different, I'm gonna use a little bit of, no, actually I'll use a little bit of chocolate. Now, believe it or not, chocolate, chocolate works very, very well with carp and uh, some of the, uh, the English introduced species. Uh, so I would use that because where I'm going to be fishing, there are plenty of carp and I might use that as an attractant. There aren't any trout there, so otherwise I'd use strawberry. So now this is going to actually change the color in this as I mold this. It'll brown it a little bit, but Oh, that smells beautiful. 
I mean, I'm almost tempted to take a bite out of it, but I won't. So all you're doing now is you're kneading that, okay, to get it about right, to get it to the consistency of plasticine. Once you've got that, you know that it will stay on your hook for quite a while. Wow, that's strong. Strong chocolate smell. That is one. This one here is started to dry out a little bit just by being in the air. Oh, <coughs> wow. Smells a little bit like that Thai food I had last night. And that is about that is about right. Now, the other thing that you can do is I've added, you know the ingredients that I've added here, you can also add things like little particles of the bait that you're going to be using. So for this one here, which is really, really for a salt water application, I would use little tiny pieces, I'm talking about very, very granular pieces of say the squid that I was, I was going to fish with, um, or little tiny pieces of pilchard, and only a small amount. With a small ball like this, Okay, to give you some context, which is not even the size of a golf ball, I'll be using about a pea-sized piece of broken up bait to mix that through. Because the more of that that you add to the dough, uh, the more unstable it becomes, the more that the dough will break up. So you really just want the flavours of that in there. The other thing you can do is to just add a little tiny bit more complexity by putting in a little bit of oil. And so you can do this in two ways. I like to put in tuna oil because the oil actually sends off uh, a basically a slick in the water, which is very strong and attracting. But equally, you could use fish oil, which will do the same type of thing. Probably the tuna oil has a heavier slick. And so this is the, the next thing I would normally do is just in this is just have a small amount in there because I've only got a small bait. Normally I make a dough bait uh, about three quarters of the size of my fist so um, these are very very small compared to that but it's just to give an idea of how they're made and that one now that smells pretty exotic that there I would leave that for a short time to actually dry out then I'd wrap it in glad wrap and I'd put it in the fridge and that will last for about a week before you use it when you take it out, it, once it gets warm, uh, it'll start to degenerate. But if you keep it in the fridge, uh, it is real, it'll last there for about a week. And when you take it out to use it, it'll be just as effective as, uh, as some of those commercial doughs. It um, really does the job. And as I say, there's so many ingredients that you can use in doing that and so many colors. Like I've only just used red today. You can use blue, green, yellow. But I must admit, I liked, I tend towards more natural colors like this one uh, simply because there are natural foods in the water this color but sometimes you could use you know you could use the fluoro colors almost if you can get them uh, because we know that commercial dough baits are those very very bright colors and they tend to work as well so there you have it you can make up different dough baits you don't have to uh, you don't have to spent a lot on the ingredients at all, but they are very, very effective. And it's sometimes amazing what you can, you can catch with these things. So there you have it. I mean, they are very, very simple dough baits and you can get quite complex with some of the flavors. I used to think that adding more than say two flavors was, um, you know, was ridiculous at times, but in actual fact, the complexity sometimes is what really attracts the fish because there are food signatures going off into the water and sometimes it's the combination that makes a difference to the fish. So that can work really well. I would love to hear from anybody who has experimented with those and caught fish with them before, especially if you've done things like colouring them um, or putting lots of different ingredients in them. Let me know what you've done. Share these ideas, okay? Put them in the links below, okay, or at least uh, comment below and uh, let others know what you've done before. It's, um, it can be very effective and let's face it, it's great fun to play with. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe for further videos coming up.